Everybody's so uptight about Wall Street bonuses. I got a commentary coming up in just a bit on that. If you watch this show regularly, you know that in this segment, I don't ask a lot of questions. I'm not a question guy in the opening of the show. I like to make declarative statements in case you haven't uh, seen. But tonight, I want to ask you a question. We have done a lot of coverage on health care in the last six months, okay? And we've talked about a lot of different scenarios. But there's one question that I've never asked the audience for any response. And I want you to think about this because we've got a couple of stories brewing across the country that I think are very interesting. Would you join the United States Army to get health insurance for your family? That's where we are for many families in this country right now. Here's a story from Wisconsin, from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel newspaper. A mother is fighting ovarian cancer. Her husband lost his job at the plastics factory in town. When he lost his job, you know the story, they lost their health care coverage. Now, they had no way to pay for her chemotherapy without it. And if she didn't, of course, she would die. So what was he going to do? Well, he goes off at the age of 39 years old, enlists in the United States Army to save his wife's life. Now, he'll be gone for four years, and the wife is going to be away from him. Uh, her treatment is going to go on, and hopefully it's going to be a success successful conclusion, but uh, he's not going to be there to support her. Their 14-year-old daughter will be, of course, grown up and going through some critical years. Would you like to leave your 14-year-old in this, in this day and times? Probably not. Now, this is the current public option in this country right now. That is our status quo, and it's a great example. When you hear Republicans going on about patient's choice, Ask yourself if that family and if that father had a choice. That's his public option right now. Lost his job, needs money, has no other options at 39. And by the way, you can join the Army all the way up until you're 42 years old. He joins in the prime of his life the United States Army because he has to. This family is not alone. There's stories like this popping up all over the country. On my radio show today, I got a call from a guy in Chicago. Same situation. Congressman Massa from Buffalo had him on the air today. He was talking about this. He's getting calls from constituents who want to get back into service. Now, we showed you a story from Grand Junction, Colorado last week. A beautiful, healthy baby boy who was denied coverage because an insurance company said he was too fat. Okay? And I think the Republicans, I often wonder... Do they hear these stories? Is this, what are they blocking reform for? Why won't they get on board? You know, this health care debate has raged on for months, and the media coverage has been very intense. And the stories that are being told, like the ones I just mentioned to you right now, this is having an impact. This is why progressives are winning on this issue for the public option and health care reform across the board. We are winning. Support for the health care reform is growing and gaining fast. The latest new uh, Washington Post ABC News poll that came out last night, 57% of Americans want a public option. 56% of Americans believe in an insurance mandate if people are given the option to get into Medicare or Medicaid. But this is the takeaway in it all. And I hope Harry Reid and Max Baucus are paying attention to this. Americans are not willing to trade a public option just so we can get a few Republicans on board. That's not what this is about. The American people do not want Democrats to give away the store to get Olympia Snow just to say, hey, it's bipartisan. When asked what they prefer in a bill, 51% of Americans say a public option. Only 37% say they prefer the support of Republicans. Republicans, they are insignificant if we want to make them that way. The American people cannot be any more clear on this issue. So what are we waiting for? Even the president has stepped up his game, and it's making a difference. His approval rating is back to 57%. With all the problems we got cooking, he's at 57%. He has shown the Republicans that he doesn't scare. Those folks who are trying to stand in the way of progress... They're, they're all, let me tell you, I'm just getting started. I don't quit. I'm not tired. I'm just getting started. And he's taken on big insurance. He absolutely hammered the insurance companies in his weekly address. Here it is. The fact is the insurance industry is making this last-ditch effort to stop reform 
even as costs continue to rise and our health care dollars continue to be poured into their profits, bonuses, and administrative costs that do nothing to make us healthy, that often actually go toward figuring out how to avoid covering people. Tonight, the president is in New York for a fundraiser. He's going to visit with his base, the ones who put him in office. The theme on the online webcast tonight is time to deliver. I hope the president is ready to show his hand to the Senate because he's the guy we elected, not the Republicans. I want you to get your cell phones out, folks. I want to know what you think about this. Would you join? Think about this. Would you join the United States military? To get health insurance, text A for yes and B for no to 622-639. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. Joining me tonight is Senator Tom Harkin. He's the chairman of the HELP Committee. Senator, great to have you on with us tonight. Uh, Glad to be with you. I, I mean, I've been listening to radio and watching network TV today. The attitudes are changing on Capitol Hill with a public option. Can you confirm that tonight? What's happening, Tom? No doubt about it. We're hearing from the countryside. It's coming in. All of the polls we're seeing, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the public is now getting it. They now know what it means to have a public health option out there. And they want it by, well, not quite two to one, but almost two to one. Among Democrats, it's over two to one. Among doctors, get this, Ed, among doctors in this country, three to one, they want a public option. Well, uh, it doesn't sound like Harry Reid believes that there's a two-to-one margin when it comes to the public option. I want to play this sound cut. He still sounds very noncommittal, and I want your reaction. Here it is. We're leaning toward talking about a public option. Um, we, no decision has been made. We've, we had a, not a long discussion last night on public option. I've had a number of meetings in my office dealing with Democrats and Republicans on the public option aspect of it, and uh, when the decision's made to send this on to uh, the CBO, I will have made a decision as to what we're going to do with the public option. You know, Senator Harkin, uh, I just find this fascinating that one man can have this much power after the American people have clearly spoken in polls and in an election. And I'm not trying to pick on Harry Reid, but I find that this is a very interesting dynamic that's playing out. And another story that gets me is that the White House has basically told Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid that uh, it would be leaving most of the big legislative decisions on reform to the Senate Majority Leader. What's happening here, Senator Harkin? Well, first of all, uh, Ed, someone wrote a book once, uh, and they called it The Dance of Legislation. So there's a little bit of a dance going on here. But the smoke's going to clear pretty soon. We'll have our bill probably towards the end of this week, uh, early next week perhaps, that we'll have it uh, uh, ready to go. And uh, I can tell you this again, Ed. I'm telling you we're going to have a public option in this bill. It's going to happen. And we're going to have it to the president before Christmas. That, that story you told about the Army guy, the guy going in the Army, if we had a public option and he lost a job, he would still be able to keep his health care for him and his family. There would be no clauses against pre-existing conditions uh, for his wife, for example. So he might decide to go to the Army for other reasons. But he wouldn't have to go just to get health care coverage. Well, I'm hearing so many stories about this, Senator Harkin. I'm, I'm starting to wonder, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but son of a gun, maybe the military likes it this way because this kind of makes it easy on recruiting. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think so, and I, I hope not. I, 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 just think, I just think this person in Wisconsin, I, I mean, he's doing what he has to do to take care of his loved ones and his family. That's the only thing he can do. I guess his age was 39, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. And so he's out of work. He's at wit's end. And this is the only pathway for him uh, to choose. People shouldn't be forced into those kinds of things. And That's do why you, I tell you. And, and, Senator, do you think the White House has been definitive and declarative enough when it comes to this part of the health care reform? Are you okay with what the White House is saying as of late? Well, I want the White House to be a little bit more forceful on this, to tell you the truth, Ed. I think the president's got to come out. We know, we know, he knows that a public option is absolutely mandatory if we're going to have any kind of cost controls. If we're going to tell the people of America that you have to have health insurance, an individual mandate, you have to have health insurance, why then are we going to tell them you have to buy it from a private company? Why don't we provide them a public option so that they have that choice? 
that's why I, I hope the White House will be a little bit more forceful on this issue. The public, as you pointed out, they get it. They want that public option. Senator, good to have you with us tonight. Tom Harkin from Iowa, chairman Thanks. of the Help Committee with us here on The Edge Show. Thanks so much, Tom.